Welcome to the film room. The goal of this video is to break down one of the principles of the gap theory and show you that teams use this concept all the time whether they know it or not. Take a look at this sequence. Now most people would be able to look at that clip and say, man, that was good offense and they shared the ball well. But we're going to go deeper and discuss why this works. And it starts with this defender right here. You're going to notice that he comes over to help on the ball. And what we call this in the gap theory is making two guard one. This overhelp by the defender is going to start a chain reaction where a domino effect will take place making everything else in this possession work. By him helping this much, it forced everybody else to help him and that created this long closeout where the defender was worried about the shot and tried to block it. This is going to start another domino effect. As he drives this bad closeout, it forces the defense to help again, making another situation where two people are guarding one. Every time this happens, the defense is going to be forced to help each other like you see again here, and it's the goal of the offense to take advantage of it, it's the goal of the defense to recover before they get beat. And finally, after all of this great ball movement and spacing from the offense, there's one more two guarding one that allows this touch pass to the big and an easy dunk. The purpose of this video is to focus on making two guard one, but because of the nature of these three principles, it's not uncommon to see two or three of these happen in just one clip. No principle is more important than the other, and they all work together to create great offense. The engine that makes this entire thing go is spacing. Make sure you check out the video on spacing that we did so that you can have a grasp of the full concept. Understanding this principle practically is the focus of this video, so we're gonna start with a very simple way to make two guard one. You'll see right here that the point guard drove into this gap trying to attack the rim and that forced this defender to come over and help to not give up a layup and that creates a wide open kick out for a catch and shoot three. Now that clip probably seemed really simple, but it happens a lot. You'll see it here again. The point guard drives this gap, forces help out of the strong side corner, making another wide open kick out for a three. Now this might seem too easy, and honestly it can be, but there are multiple layers to this concept. As the guard drove towards the middle, he forced that top defender to come over and help, making two guard one in a way that we would refer to as stunting. This is something that most coaches teach in some way, shape, or form, and this defender is not coming over to double team, he's just trying to bluff at him to get him to pick the basketball up. This tactic is effective, but it creates long closeouts when the defender is trying to get back to his man. One of the things that we talked about earlier in the video is that these three principles typically work off of each other. And one of the things you're going to see is that making two guard one almost always leads to an open shot or it leads to someone driving a bad closeout. As this defender runs out out of control, the offensive player drives downhill, gets in a gap, and you guessed it, makes two people guard one. You're gonna see this same process happen in this clip. The ball handler rejects the ball screen, forces two people to guard one, turns around and kicks it out and forces a bad closeout by the defender who got confused on the switch, leading to a downhill drive, the second defender steps up making two people guard one again, leading to a fundamental bounce pass and an open dunk. Now we'll transition to a different way to create two people guarding one, and it's with a post touch. As the ball goes in, I want you to focus on this defender. Most coaches are going to teach either digging or firing from the perimeter defenders when the ball goes into the post. This is an example of digging, which is essentially like a stunt that we saw in the last clip. As he goes down to help, 
the ball's going to get kicked out, and there's too long of a closeout for him to get back, which leads to an open three. If a team is concerned about their post defense, this is an easy way to create two people guarding one. Now in this clip, on this ball screen, you're going to see a switch, which means that the defense is really going to be in trouble. As you see, as soon as that ball gets thrown in, two people don't guard one, 19 people guard one. Everybody comes down to help because they're concerned about that mismatch right there. This leads to two guys being wide open on the perimeter for a kick out. Now as this ball gets kicked to the corner, I want to teach you something. It would be very easy for number five, Cam Carter, to shoot this basketball because on the catch he was wide open. However, you can see that the highlighted player Grady Dick is flying out to make a contest on this shot and what Cam Carter does is he gives up what's a good shot for a great shot. We already covered what digging looks like in the post, now we're going to talk about firing. As this post player starts to back his man down, you're going to see the opposite big come over and double team. This is what we would call firing. It's still the same concept. It's two people guarding one, and it opens up this post-to-post -post pass for a dunk. The last concept we're going to talk about in making two guard one is the most popular thing in basketball today, the ball screen. We'll do a separate video where we break down every ball screen coverage and I'm going to show you in a detailed way why the gap theory is the reason that ball screens are so successful and why everybody is using them. But what you'll see right here is two people are guarding one off this ball screen so the post player is going to roll. I want you to key in on this top defender who sees the roll happening and comes over and does what we would call tagging and that's going to open up this kickback to what we would call a shake action for a wide open three. Now you'll see an early drag screen and it couldn't be more obvious that two people are guarding one. But here becomes the game within the game. Most people would look at this and say the ball's got to go to the post player because he's open. But this is that second level read because that backside defender is going to come up and help. And as he starts to help, the guard throws it to his man in the corner, forcing a bad closeout. He drives middle and gets an open jumper. You'll see in this possession that as the ball screen gets set, two people are guarding one. You can see the big is open on the roll, so the ball goes to him, and as he catches it, he feels the help defender and kicks it out. On the kick out, we see the bad closeout, so he drives to the middle, and as he's attacking, another defender steps up, and we dump it down to the big for an open shot. Here is the sequence of make two guard one, drive a bad closeout, make two guard one. Now these reads won't always be the same, so you can anticipate but you can't assume. You'll see on this clip that both defenders actually go with the roll man. The guy guarding the ball handler thought there was going to be a switch, the big thought he was staying, which leaves the guard wide open for what we would call a load the gun three. By now, hopefully your eyes are starting to pick this stuff up faster or even before it happens. Be encouraged that the more you watch film, the easier this stuff will be for you to see. So I hope you come back and watch more videos. Thanks for coming through. We'll see you next time in the film room.